Okay, all right, so we're moving forward. We're you know almost in the final stretch of chapters in the course. I think we have this chapter and two more, and we're we're all done. Um, so chapter twenty-one, which is what we're on right now, amines. Uh, we're continuing chapter twenty-one, which is amines, and we we did the PowerPoint material last time, which was sections one through five, PowerPoint. Now we're continuing onward with section six, which is a synthesis of amines. We're going to do primary amines. Synthesis of primary amines by alkylation. And this is SN2 alkylation. Um, so it's really just reacting an alkyl halide with something to make an amine. Whoa. Whoops. Okay, synthesis of an amine by alkylation. And let's, what, we, what we usually do is we first show some bad methods. A bad method, really. And then we'll show the good method. So the bad method um, is going to be called direct alkylation. Direct alkylation. Okay. And the idea is again, we're going to start with an alkyl halide and we're going to imagine our goal like diethyl amine. Okay. Let's think about a way to make this. It's not diethyl, it's a monoethyl. It's ethyl amine. Ethyl amine. Um, let's think about a way to make this and maybe maybe just using um, like ethyl bromide, right? If we were gonna react convert ethyl bromide to ethyl amine using organic wine chemistry, this should actually be pretty pretty straightforward, right? All we have to do is kick the leaving group off with something with uh, maybe a nitrogen and some hydrogens. Rather than two hydrogens, maybe you'll have three hydrogens. So you could just imagine NH3 and then SN2 reaction, right? Sure, that actually doesn't seem that bad. Why is it a bad method? That's, that's a good question. This looks pretty good. We have nitrogen is taxed, and now we got uh, ethyl ammonium. There's probably a Br plus out here. I'm gonna skip the Br, but it's there. It's probably Br. Sorry, Br minus. NH3 plus Br minus. Let's skip the Br for now, but it's there. And then we just imagine while well, there's more ammonia, and that ammonia could be a base, and just take off one of these protons. Okay, and now we got got the product. Well, that sounds great. Why did why why is this bad? I think it's good, isn't it? <laughs> well, the problem if that's our goal, well, it looks like we've achieved our goal. But the problem is this happens to be a nucleophile too. So this is a good nuke. Still, <clears throat> amines are nucleophilic, so we got the product, but it's still a good nucleophile. And it's going to react again with more of this stuff. And the problem is it's going to do it again. It's going to react again. So the NH2 now is going to attack and kick it off again. And now we're going to get this. Lose a proton. And now it looks like we have a mixture of maybe some of this and some of that. <clears throat> the problem is it'll keep going and going. <laughs> and the end result is you'll actually have... It's going to actually make a mixture of one ethyl group, two ethyl groups, three ethyl groups and four ethyl groups where you could say that it's a mixture of a 
primary amine, a secondary amine, a tertiary amine, which I'm not drawing, and a quaternary ammonium. This thing is called a quaternary ammonium. And generally speaking, when you make a mixture of stuff in organic chemistry, that's not, not a desired outcome. So it's like we don't want to make four different molecules. Usually, usually like above, if you can see, our, our goal is to make this. Well, we definitely probably make a little bit of that, but you also make a bunch of other stuff. So the goal was not achieved by this bad method, direct alkylation. Okay? Okay, great. So yeah, why why doesn't it stop? Why why doesn't after ammonia attacks and and uh, you lose a proton? Why doesn't it stop there? The part of the problem is as you add more alkyl groups, it's actually a little more reactive. So that's actually maybe a little more reactive because the two ethyl groups are electron donating, and now with a more electron donating groups, the nitrogen's more nucleophilic. So yeah, net result though is you get a mixture of, crazy, of all these different things. Okay. Uh, note this is okay if your goal is to make a quaternary ammonium. Um, so if your goal is to make a quaternary ammonium, like if I wanted to take this and react it extensively with methyl iodide excess, then I could do that, and that would make the quaternary ammonium, right? And then it'd be methyl iodo minus, right? So there are cases actually where you want to do this and, and make a, a exhaustively alkylated group. Um, other cases where this is okay also, also okay. If you have a poorly nucleophilic group, sometimes you can get away with a single methylation or alkylation. So like if I have this, which is not very nucleophilic, right, aniline. Not very nucleophilic. It's a benzene there, right? Benzene. It's a pretty bad drawing of a benzene. Three triple bonds, three double bonds. Um, I could possibly stop with like a single methylation because it's sort of a bad nucleophile. So I could probably make like a, a monomethyl aniline if I'm using a, a, a poor nucleophile, a poorly nucleophilic thing. So this isn't, you know, this is a case where I might be able to stop. Okay, great. Generally speaking though, I, we, we'd say there's kind of a bad method because of al this, this kind of SN2 alkylation because sometimes you, you might expect multiple products. But there's a couple okay situations where your goal is quaternary ammonium, the goal is to make this. Sometimes you actually want to make these, there's reasons to. And also sometimes if you use a poorly nucleophilic nitrogen, it may stop at, at one. Okay. Okay, so let's show an approved method. Improved Method number one that allows us, or we'll say it avoids the overalkylation problem. Avoids a avoids overalkylation problem, um, and that is via azide. What's an azide? Or what? What? Uh, yeah. What is azide? It's it's a nitrogen thing, but it's it's nitrogen double bond, nitrogen double bond, nitrogen. So it's three nitrogens in a row. And so an example is if we're gonna try to make, we want to convert this to a amine. 
uh, four carbons NH2. Well, the way we can do this is um, first do a simple SN2 with sodium azide. Sodium azide. Well, what are the charges of the nitrogens? This goes back to organic one and formal charge. Well, N with two things on it is negative. N with four things on it is positive. And this N has two things, so it's negative. So it's negative, positive, negative. And there's two lone pairs there, two lone pairs there. Okay. And, and then this is going to be an SN2 reaction. Maybe use DMF as your SN2 friendly organic solvent. And so the mechanism is simply just have... Nitrogen attack and kick off a BR. Whoops, uh oh. Okay, and now you made an alkyl azide. And what are the charges now? Well, one nitrogen gave up its lone pair, so that's neutral now. It's also got three bonds on it, which is neutral. But these are plus and minus. Okay, so now you have this alkyl azide thing, and but that's not what we want. We want we want to make an amine. We want to make four carbons NH two. So how do we go about doing that? So now we can do a reduction: lithium aluminum hydride, and H three O plus, or H two O. Okay, so th this reaction will cause the the conversion of the azide to the amine, and we also lose in, lose N2. So this is a reduction <coughs> of the azide to the amine. The textbook does not give a mechanism for this, but I have a mechanism that I like. So let's show the mark mechanism. Um, so we're going to react with H minus. So I came up with this mechanism myself. So um, I should patent it and get royalties on it. Um, it's probably in a book somewhere. I just it's not in our textbook. But the way to know this is well, this is nucleophilic, right? H minus is nucleophile. Okay. And it attacks stuff. And, may, and, and it's going to attack one of these nitrogens. Well, which nitrogen do you think it might attack? Maybe one with a, a, a hydrogen on the final product. And the left one is probably going to be, the left one here is probably going to be that one there. So it would make sense that we would attack the left nitrogen. We attack, and then what happens? Then we kick electrons onto that nitrogen. Of course, it was positive, so when we add electrons to it, it won't be positive anymore. It's going to be neutral. Now we have a single bond. Right? Okay, and so now the way I draw this, because we have two lone pairs left on the right, right side, right? So now, now I just kick in, that makes N triple bond N, uh, nitrogen gas, and that breaks this off. So here we lose N2, kicks off N2 gas, and then we have. negatively charged nitrogen and then we just throw in some water or acid and it takes proton and it gives us the final product. Okay, so that's that's it. That's an easy mechanism I would say. The lithium aluminum hydride reduction of an azide. Okay, so it's a two-step process. First we do an SN2 reaction to make an azide 
and then we reduce the azide with lithium aluminum hydride and acid water which gives us the amine and it's a pretty simple mechanism nucleophilic attack of the left nitrogen and then it swings back, the other nitrogen swings back and breaks off into and we get the final product which well N minus grabs a proton it makes the amine okay okay so this is improved method number one let's show improved method number two Improved method number two. So this has a name, it's called the Gabriel Amine Synthesis. Gabriel Amine Synthesis. And uh, produced by somebody named Gabriel, uh, probably in the 1800s, a long time ago. And it's just another way of, do, of doing a controlled SN2 reaction, no overalkylation, and then we get our single primary amine product. Okay, so let's do the same thing, but same substrate. Four carbons bromine. Let's do another SN2 reaction, but this time we're going to use a different nucleophile. So we're going to do K plus or sodium, potassium or sodium, N it's a little bit of a crazy molecule so it's a potassium salt of this nitrogen conjugate base okay this is as a name it's called potassium thalamate pH T H A L I M I D E. Imid. What does imid mean? Imid is kind of like this weird double amid. So it's like a nitrogen, carbonyl, and carbonyl. So it's like an amid times two. So that is kind of like an amid. This is an imid with, let's ignore the potassium. When you have carbonyls on both sides of the nitrogen, it's called an imid. Okay. All right, and then it's going to be an SN2 reaction. It's going to be an SN2 reaction. And so get what solvent what might we use for SN2? Maybe some DMF. That's probably a good one. Mechanistically, the first step is really easy. The, the, you know, the molecule looks crazy, but it's really just an SN2. Nitrogen attacks. Okay. Why do they use the potassium salt? Why, you know, what if it's just NH? Imagine the NH version of this. Why might that not react as an SN2 substrate nucleophile? Well, if it's NH, it's kind of just like an amide, right? Like a double amide. And the NH is not nucleophilic. So by making it the potassium salt, K plus N minus, we've made this like triple or, I don't know, probably ten times more nucleophilic. So it's now it's actually a good nucleophile because it's negatively charged nitrogen and it attacks. Well again, our, our goal is not to make this silly thing. The goal is to make NH2, right? So in this case, well how, how do we do with the azide, right? If the, say we did this and we get an azide, how do you turn the azide back to an amine? Well that was with lithium aluminum hydride, right? If it's an azide, you do lithium aluminum hydride and then it reduces. This is not a reduction, this is a hydrolysis. So it's really maybe a little bit of heat in there also. But this, um, uh, by reacting this with acid water and maybe a little bit of cooking, uh, you can also use base or OH minus. Acid or base causes the degradation of this stuff um, to the amine and then you can kind of guess what the byproduct's going to be 
what do you think the byproduct might be? Well, um, what do you think the byproduct might be? Well, we're hydrolyzing one amide and we're hydrolyzing another amide. And if you're hydrolyzing amides with H3O, maybe the carbonyl is turning into a carboxylic acid. So this will become a carboxylic acid, this will become a carboxylic acid. And so the end result is actually the dicarboxylic acid. And it's simply a amide hydrolysis of two amides. You have amide one and amide two. Okay. And we'll we'll show the mechanism of that in a second. Okay, so that's that's essentially what it is. It's a hydrolysis of this. This happens to be called phthalic acid, PHTH. Phthalic acid. And that kind of phthalic acid is a dicarboxylic acid, ortho dicarboxylic acid on a benzene. And when you say potassium thalamid, thalamid it kind of Thal referred to the carbonyls being ortho, and then imid meant the nitrogen, kind of double amide thing. So it kind of makes sense that we go from this thalamid to this phthalic acid. Okay. All right, so let's show the mechanism of how the hydrolysis reaction occurs. Okay, mechanism of thal, PHTHAL, thalamid, hydrolysis. So this is kind of like the second step of the Gabriel amine synthesis. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to give myself a lot of space because this is a little bit of a mechanism. And I'm not going to draw every little bit of it because you actually kind of know this already, so. Um, this is going to be another case where I'm going to draw about half of it and then you can finish it. And it's probably beneficial to you to finish it because it might be a quiz problem. It's definitely one of the few reactions that could possibly be a quiz problem. Okay, so what we're seeing here, the net reaction is the thalamid, H3O, makes the amine and a dicarboxylic acid. So what do you think the first step is? Well, same old, same old. We've seen this kind of stuff a thousand times now. Protonation of a carbonyl. And it's just a, th a thalamid, a thalamid carbonyl with acid. All right, so protonate a thalamid carbonyl. And I'm going to abbreviate a little bit. Okay, so that's an abbreviation of what we got. Maybe we, we have a, long, a double bond there or something, whatever. Uh, but we also have a proton now. Okay, so we, we protonate the carbonyl. This is an amide hydrolysis. So, and this is an RSCC. You can draw the RSCC out if you like. Um, but what do we know about RSCCs? They like to be attacked. So I'm gonna try to save some space by going downward. So now water attacks. Okay, water attacks the RSCC. Okay, what happens after nucleophilic attack? 
proton transfer. And the thing that's going to be a leaving group is nitrogen. We want to kind of kick nitrogen off of this molecule. So we're going to PT and go downward. PT to nitrogen. Okay, now nitrogen is a good leaving group. So kick off nitrogen. Oxygen kicks off nitrogen. Okay. I'll zoom out to show the whole thing a little bit later. All right, so now we have a, carbo a protonated carboxylic acid on the top and this amide on the bottom. And normally now we're like, okay, minus H plus, right? Stop. But we got to keep going. And the way I recommend doing this is just PT from the top carboxylic acid down to the bottom amide. which now is positively charged. Okay, where are we going with this? So what, you know, what do we have yet to do? We just got to cleave the bottom amid, right? Well, we, we, just, we do it the same exact way we just cleaved the top amid, right? The top amid, we protonate, water attacks, proton transfer, kick off the top carbonyl and then we uh, get this so it's a, there's only a couple more steps and I will let you do those steps do it in your notes make it nice and big and spread it out use a full page and draw really small okay because what has what is yet to happen once we're at this point now just water attacks again and then we proton transfer onto nitrogen and then kick off and then we're very close, and then we just make the amine and the dicarboxylic acid. Okay. So hopefully the the dicarboxylic acid is nice and clear, right? It's a it's a carboxyl ortho dicarboxylic acid on benzene. All right, that's the Gabriel hydrolysis mechanism. Okay. Um, there's another cleavage mechanism method, I guess, for the Gabriel. So, thalamid. So, we make that the SNT reaction. And then, so what we can do is react this with this stuff. What's that called again? You've seen it before. What was it? When did we learn about this? We learned it about it with the Wolf-Kishner reaction, right? WK, the Wolf-Kishner, which was used to deoxygenate a ketone or aldehyde. Well, back then, um, you, I, I probably said so. I definitely said something. And you probably forgot it, but this stuff, one of the couple properties of it, it's super toxic. I think it's carcinogenic. It is also kind of corrosive. It's kind of it's used in rocket fuel. So space shuttle uses this when it, when um, when like space shuttle or, the, or rockets are launched into the atmosphere. Hydrazine is a really flammable, good fuel type source, but it's also toxic. So. 
But the other thing is it's really highly nucleophilic. Highly nucleophilic. And that's why that's, that helped it when the wolf kitchen reaction. Because reaction. <clears throat> it was highly nucleophilic. Well, anyway, it just attacks. I am not going to do the mechanism, and you're not, I'm not going to ask you for this mechanism. Uh, I'm just saying no mech. It does uh, some other stuff. Uh, but the end result is it breaks off, and and the other byproduct is kind of like this. So this is a is it like, you get kind of two nitrogens connected to this thalamid thing. Okay, so that's the byproduct. I'm not going to worry about that mechanism. Uh, you could probably even guess a mechanism, and it'd probably be pretty, pretty close to correct. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Side note. Side note. There, this molecule is actually related to a substance that I'll draw over here. It's related to this. substance, if it has an NH2 here, so that's a carbon, six carbons, right? I didn't draw this too well. I'll get to benzene with six carbons, sorry, I drew it poorly. Um, and this is called luminol. Luminol, which you've probably encountered sometime in your life. It's, it's found in glow sticks, so little sticks that you break. Uh, and it creates light. It's like a light stick. And what happens is, in the presence of oxygen um, or bleach or blood or blood, it gets hydrolyzed. Drawing, my drawing ability is pretty bad today. <laughs> it's a benzene, right? Okay, there we go. Benzene. Okay, it gets hydrolyzed to this derivative. It's another benzene, sorry. And it, it also makes N2, and it makes light. So this is actually kind of how, how glow sticks work. So this molecule, luminol, reacts usually with oxygen, or, or like there might be a capsule of bleach inside the little glow stick, dilute bleach, and then light is created. So it's a, it's a, a light generation mechanism. The, the actual mechanism is kind of crazy in how this works. Well, the other interesting thing is that uh, blood does this, and so this is used in forensics investigations. So like in a, we'll say like a murder scene or something, the, the police will spray this stuff around and it and then wear like glasses where they can actually see little uh, light emission that's actually that identifies where blood is so the so luminol is used in forensics and police investigations to kind of identify like the presence of blood in a crime scene okay so that's just a little side note and it's you know it's 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 vaguely related to the byproduct of this Gabriel synthesis um, where, um, where we use hydrazine in the cleavage process. Okay, and we're not going to do the mechanism of that. All right. Okay, so... We did improve method number two. We did improve, which is the azide method. We did improve number, method number, sorry. Improved method number one was the azide method. Improved method number two was the Gabriel amine synthesis, which we just did. And improved method number three now, which we'll, we're calling D. Improved method number three is another SN2 type method. And this is via nitrile. 
which we actually we've learned this method already. Um, I'll just show the same example. And how are these methods improved? Because they work nicely with an SN2 reaction. So it's a, a nice, well-behaved SN2 followed by some uh, reaction to make the amine. So sodium or potassium cyanide, DMF. And so this uh, is yet another way to do this. We learned this, uh, I think last chapter. And that makes a nitrile. So cyanide, sodium cyanide plus alkyl halide, DMF, SNT reaction, makes a nitrile. And then we had a way to Um, to convert the nitrile to an amine, we learned this. One, two, three, four, five. Noting, noticing that we, the one, one difference between this method and the other methods is we went from four carbons, one, two, three, four, to five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, which we call a one carbon homologation. And we've seen that, it would, yeah, that word homologation is used to indicate we've added a carbon. Sometimes we'll have a two-carbon homologation. And that would mean we've added two carbons. Well, what are, what's the method to do the conversion of the nitrile to the amine? And it's in your notes, uh, but I'm just going to write it down. Lithium aluminum hydride H3O or H2O. Okay. And we actually showed the mechanism. I'm not going to do it again. I'll just review it in words real quick. In words, it was H minus. It attacks. So it attacks once, and then it attacks again. Remember, it attacked twice. And then you get this weird nitrogen 2 minus thing. It's like first it's nitrogen minus, then it's nitrogen 2 minus, and then we give acid water, and then it um, protonates. So review that, this last, uh, last lecture, near the end of the last lecture, okay? So this is the improved method number three for doing kind of SN2 synthesis of amines. Improved method number three. Okay, let's summarize all these things. The three things we've just learned. Let's show a summary of them. Okay, so let's look at that one more time. Improved method number three, nitrile. NACN attacks the SN2, and then we do a reduction of the nitrile to make the amine, okay? So let's show a summary. So how about, we'll use benzyl bromide as an example. So there's kind of three ways we can convert this to amines. First way was like NaN3, and then there's some step. The second way was the potassium thalamid, K plus, N minus, a little hard to draw, I'll, I'll do my best. Okay, so you can review the structure, but that's basically it. It's a benzene. For the Gabriel amine synthesis, and that is a has a different a second step, and that makes an amine as well. We can also do like NaCN and do a second step. We'll review those second steps in a second. The difference here is now it's a one car carbon homologation, and now it's extra nitrogen. Okay. Okay, so what are the second steps in each of these? Remember what the second step of the azide reaction is? What the second step of the Gabriel is? Or what the second step of the nitrile method is? Well, it's lithium aluminum hydride. I'm skipping the water because I don't have space, but yeah, it's step three would be water. You can draw it nice and big. H2O, H3O, okay? How do we do the second step of the Gabriel? I usually say H3O plus, 
Uh, we also know about like hydrazine or hydrazine, right? Okay. So some sort of maybe acid hydrolysis of the thalamid. So first of tax, then there's acid or hydrolysis or hydrazineolysis. And then for, if you make a nitrile, if NaCN attacks, how do we turn the nitrile into an amine? That's lithium aluminum hydride. And since I have space here, I'm going to write H2O or H3O. Cool. So I'd probably draw this out nice and big on your notes. That's a good summary, okay, of these methods. Okay, so we showed a couple of those alkylating amine synthesis methods to make amines by alkylation. Let's show a different way to make amines now. Seven. Synthesis of primary, secondary, or tertiary amines by a reaction called reductive amination. Reductive amination. I'm going to pull a star here because this is one of the most um, kind of common and, and important used methods to make amines in, in modern organic chemistry. Um, let's just show an example, uh, kind of an overview, and then we'll show some examples. All right, so the overview of this idea. The overview of reductive amination, sometimes I call it red-am. Red-am, R-E-D-A-M. I don't know if anybody else does that. I do it. <laughs> Is we make an amine or an aminium. Really easy. We've learned how to do that. And then we reduce it. And we reduce it. We make an amine or an aminium and then we reduce it. Okay, so um, let's show the basic idea of it. So I'll take the amine and I'll react it with acetone. Okay. And that'll be product. And we need to add, have a reducing agent in here. Um, what, what's, what essentially happens when these two find each other? This is chapter 19, or I think, maybe 18 or 19. And um, yeah, they, this attacks, you know, makes a good leaving group, kicks it off. And you get uh, this, right? What's that called? There might be a little acid in this mixture, H plus cat. All right, that, this is called imine. Remember that? We have imines and iminiums. Iminium is kind of like a, some sort of positively charged imine. We have imines, we have iminiums, and we have enamines. That's the other one. We'll probably see enamines again in a bit. But here, yeah, we make an imine and we reduce it. And the reduction is some kind of maybe H H minus reagent or something. Uh, yeah, this just attacks, makes an N minus, and then some kind of proton source protonates nitrogen, and, you, and you're done. Right? Um, we usually use uh, specialized um, H minus reagent. It's, it's different the, than the other ones you've learned. What are the other H minus reagents you've learned about? Um, well, NABH4, uh, LIALH4. Most recently, you've learned about Dibol and um, what is it? Lithium tributoxy aluminum hydride, which reduces acid chlorides. So you know a couple H minus reagents. Um, and anyway, and if you're making index cards, maybe make an index card of all the different H minus reagents you know, right? 
Okay, well this one uses a different one, and it's Na plus um, Cn BH3, and I think it's negative on the boron, yeah. Or we just say it's NaCn BH3. This is just a specialized H minus reagent that's very commonly used with reductive amination. Um, we usually do this at pH 2 to 3. What does that mean? It just means basically that we have, it's slightly acidic, and that's where we get our H plus cap from. By just setting the pH to 2 to 3, it's, it's, the, magic, it's the magic pH for this reaction to work really well. And, and, then, and then it's not like we add H plus CAD, it's just kind of in the mixture because their pH is low. Okay. Um, another uh, reducing condition is nickel H2. H2 nickel or nickel H2. And the book talks about that a little bit. Generally speaking, I just I, I try to opt, nah, I try to uh, emphasize NAC and BH3 as my reducing agent for this stuff. Okay, let's show some examples now. Let's show some examples. First one. We're going to make a primary amine with redu reductive amination. Red am, reductive amination. So it, to do this, essentially, it's just ketone or aldehyde, and then NH3, and AC and BH3. Um, pH 2 to 3. I'm going to often skip that part just because it's not, I mean, it's silly to write, rewrite that over and over. Or you just say H, H plus cap. Or H plus cap. Catalytic. A little bit of catalytic acid. But sodium cyanoborohydride. Yeah, no, that's the other thing. The name of this. The name of this thing is called sodium cyanoborohydride. Sodium cyanoborohydride. Sodium cyano borohydride. Okay? As opposed to like sodium borohydride, which is NaBH4. And lithium aluminum hydride, which is LiAlH4. But this is called sodium cyano borohydride. Okay, and uh, what's the product of this? Well, you just imagine ammonia making sort of an imine with a ketone. Okay. Um, the key intermediate is simply that, I mean, and then H minus attacks it, right? You should be able to. Re you should review this mechanism of how a ketone reacts with NH3 and a little bit of acid, and how it forms the amine. Um, it's really straightforward. I, I may show that again, but it, but it essentially, you protonate the ketone, right? Protonate the ketone, ammonia attacks, proton transfer to make oxygen a good leaving group, and then nitrogen kicks it off. So it's really straightforward how it goes from there to there. And then H minus attacks. Let's draw the intermediate. It's NH minus. Couple lone pairs. Okay, and then we uh, proton protonation from your solvent or from somewhere to uh, protonate the N minus, right? Okay, there you go. That's, a, that's an example of reductive amination and how it creates a primary amine. 
from a ketone or aldehyde. How about another one? Make a secondary amine via reductive amination. All right, let's try this. So we'll try a different ketone. And we'll do propylamine and ACMBH3. I'll say H plus cat, acid catalysis. Okay, and outcome. Is that amine? Okay. Um, we've kind of just attached the two things. They get attached and reduced. First you attach them, then you reduce them. Okay. Um, the key intermediate is an imine. And then we H minus it. We make the imine from the amine and the acid catalysis. You know how to do it. I'm not going to review it for you. Ketone attacks proton, you make the RSCC. Nitrogen attacks proton transfer, kick off a leaving group, and then essentially you're going from ketone plus amine. A couple steps later, you get the amine, and then H minus attacks this, and that's easy to draw. Make, make N minus, and then uh, protonate. Uh, I should say also, a lot of these times the reactions are done to methanol, and that's a proton source, and that, that could be where you're, you're getting your, um, when you have your N minus, where it gets its proton from. So methanol, I can't really squeeze it up there, but, yeah. and often solvents, we, we don't draw every solvent for every reaction. But if you're, at, if you're wondering, where does it get the proton from, it's, yeah, probably your solvent, like methanol, okay? So that's uh, making a secondary amine. From a from reductive amination. Okay, we made a, we showed how to make a primary amine using ammonia. We showed how to make a secondary amine from a primary amine. And and notice something that if we we go from a primary amine to make a secondary amine, we want to make a tertiary amine. So for, let's say our goal is to make a tertiary amine product. What kind of amine do we use? in the reaction, well, there'll be a secondary amine. So secondary will go to tertiary, just like primary goes to secondary. Okay. So now let's show how to make a tertiary amine. Making Tertiary amine. Via reductive amination. Let's make a tertiary amine via reductive amination. Okay? Uh, let's call it, not three, let's call it D in this section. Okay? Okay, and the big thing is that this will be through not an imine, but an iminium, which is kind of like a positively charged imine. Okay, how about we'll react this ketone with this secondary amine, NaCNBH3. H plus cat, or you could say pH 2 to 3. Um, out comes the secondary amine. That. Mechanism goes 
I'm gonna I'm not gonna show how to form the aminium. I'll I'll step through it in words though. Because when the nitrogen attacks, there's just first a protonation of the ketone. First a protonation of the ketone, and then the nitrogen attacks, and then you proton transfer, make a good leaving group. And you get a aminium. Oops. One second. I lost my pen. Oh. I lost one of my colored pens. I'll try purple. Okay. Um, yeah, so ketone plus secondary amine and uh, use catalysis, acid catalysis. You should be able to get oh, there. there uh, make the aminium. This is called aminium, right? All right, and then how do we convert the aminium to the amine? Well, it looks like we're adding an H there and, a, a, and just an H there. So now H minus, what is H minus? Where is H minus coming from again? H minus, in quotes. H minus, in quotes. When we say H minus, in quotes, where is that? Well, that's from NAC and BH3. That's the NAC and BH3, H minus, yeah? Well, anyway, now it just very easily reduces the aminium. H minus attacks the carbon and kicks the electrons up. That's pretty easy, yeah? It's the same kind of thing. Make some kind of imine or aminium type derivative first. Secondary amine reacts with the ketone and acid catalysis to make the aminium, and then we reduce it with H minus. Okay, and then we're done. And then we're well, these are all pretty easy reactions, right? Okay. Okay, so another topic related to reductive amination is that we can do this sort of um, one pot versus two step by one, by one pot we mean kind of just mix everything up and then it reacts it actually works in a lot of ways but let's just show an example of how we can do it a couple of different ways okay so I'm reacting um, this aldehyde will will react it with H2N. This kind of weird amine with a cyclopropane on it. Um, we can actually also just sort of separate the steps, right? I can just I can just have the aldehyde react with the amine and say, all right, H plus cat, because we learned this. This is organic. Well, this is actually this this. Um, course chapter I think is 17 or 18 but essentially that the aldehyde could react with the amine just to make the amine right that makes an amine which we we know about that that was old stuff for us at this point but we can make this and then and then actually we could just throw in almost any reducing agent and commonly any BH4 is used which um, any BH4 is a nice reducing agent. We use it for ketones and aldehydes. But if we if we actually uh, for this kind of like two step process, any BH4 is sufficient, and then it just it's just H minus attacks, right? Usually methanol solvent, whatever. And our, our end product. Is, is that, right? I just flipped it over, flipped it up. But I guess, 
you can do, you can imagine doing this either through the two-step process, make the amine reduce it, or you can do it all in one pot. NaCnBH3. And maybe a little acid catalysis. So sometimes people do it one way, sometimes people do it the other way. Now you know both ways. And when you're doing the two-step process, uh, it turns out NaBH4 is dirt cheap. So this would is maybe a little more financially practical to go the top way, making it mean reduce it. And AC and BH3 is a little bit more costly. Um, one other little side note, because when you do when you do this and you isolate your product, uh, you, you often use a little bit of acid in a we call it aqueous extraction, which is kind of a isolation, and sometimes this creates HCN. And HCN is exceedingly toxic, so you have to worry about HCN. And it's it's uh, cyanide gas. It's I think the the uh, the joke that people say is that it smells like almonds. You actually smell almonds. So usually you smell almonds and you're dead <laughs> because it's actually kind of toxic. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but usually if you if you smell anything kind of almond-like, you you would stop working with this. In the in the real lab, of course, you would anticipate HCN hazard and you definitely work in the fume hood. So HCN gas is, uh, uh, you know, you, you just work definitely in the fume hood and you're not inhaling any of the vapors that come off your separatory funnel. So that's a kind of a toxicity issue with NACN BH3. It's not necessarily toxic, but it creates HCN during workup. Okay. All right. Um, I, I'm just going to say generally in this class uh, one pot's better by one pot I mean kind of the NACNBH3 method okay alright Okay, so let's show just a couple examples of sort of synthesis via reductive emanation. So um, how, how you can actually kind of use it, use reductive emanation in a synthesis problem. Um, so let's show it as, as an example. This molecule. So this is uh, fluoxetine, uh, Prozac. So it's one of these SSRI antidepressant drugs. And so amines can be really readily prepared by reductive amination very easily. And this, and you're you're kind of attaching two pieces, right? From a um, you're making an amine and you're reducing it. So if we're trying to make this, we can draw these little arrows towards it, like two synthetic approaches. And I can imagine an A method and a B method, right? Where I, I'm envisioning an amine maybe on the right side and an amine maybe on the left side, okay? So let's, I'm gonna, actually on the top I'm gonna have the amine on the right. So. I'm going to abbreviate also the benzenes. So the pH means benzene, pH means a normal benzene. Since this benzene is weird because of the CF3, uh, I'm going to call it AR. It says OAR. So pH is the benzene, OAR is the other guy. All right. Well, of course, um, yeah, if we have this imine and we reduce it, what's the product? Is that, right? Let's try the other one. Well, the amine could be on the other side. And it's the same thing. So, 
you could envision the amine on one side, you could envision the amine on the other side. In, in either case, the amine gets reduced and you make the amine, right? That's reductive amination. So then the question might be, and I'm going to try to I gotta use my space wisely here, I'll zoom out a bit. Well, what's, how can I disconnect this amine, top one? There's a squiggly line to suggest, oh, well, that, that amine can be created from a, a something, a left piece and a right piece, right? Because what are the starting materials of reductive amination? Well, cover up, and I'm like, okay, well, that looks like something. It's a methylamine. It's CH3 and H2, right? Methylamine. It's just a nitrogen with one carbon on it. Methylamine. And then the other thing you react with is a what? It's a... Um, What's the other component of a reductive amination reaction? It's a ketone or aldehyde. So that could be, maybe looks like a, looks like an aldehyde, right? Yeah, so maybe I can envision an amine and a reaction with an aldehyde. And so, okay. So the ultimate starting materials are methylamine, and the aldehyde, that acetylondo thing. So, yep, so if I react this amine and this aldehyde, it'll make that imine and and then it gets reduced. So, also got to throw in a little bit of NaCnBH3. NaCnBH3 and a little bit of acid catalysis. Given that, I can make almost any amine in the world, right? I made this, I converted the, a, a primary amine to this secondary amine, which is Prozac, okay? How about this one? Let's, let's do this one. I can zoom this one in a little better. Well, of course, we have, this is the amine, there's a CH2 there on the end. And I can envision, well, we can make this amine from a something piece, a left piece and a right piece. On the left, it looks like maybe a aldehyde, a one carbon aldehyde, right? A one carbon aldehyde. On the right, it looks like a primary amine, right? Primary amine. So I can just break this down into just formaldehyde. And this primary amine, right? And if I react these two pieces together, this primary amine with formaldehyde and NaCnBH3, Well, that would make the amine, and then that would be reduced to Prozac the amine. So I'll zoom out so you can try to see both approaches. Hopefully you can see everything nicely. Yeah. All right, there we go. Yeah, so any, almost any amine, we can envision sort of this sort of disconnective approach where you look at the amine and you envision, oh, the imine can be on one side or the imine can be on the other side. And then we just break down the imine into its two components. This imine is produced by formaldehyde and a primary amine. This imine is produced by methylamine, which is the nitrogen on the left, and this aldehyde. And then in either case, just CS, NaCnBH3 and like acid catalysis. Okay, so that is, that's really cool. Reductive amination is a very versatile way to make amines. Very versatile way to make amines. Red am. Reductive amination is a very versatile way to make amines. Alright, um, 
Yet another way to make amines is from amides. And this is actually kind of all review because you, you've learned this already. Well, let's review it again. There's kind of two ways we can make an amide and reduce it to an amine. Two complementary approaches to do this. One is the we'll say direct reduction. So we just make an amide, make an amide, acetyl bundo and nitrogen, and we just reduce it. How do we reduce an amide to an amine? I saw it recently, it's just lithium aluminum hydride. We just reduce an amide to an amine with lithium aluminum hydride. And both of these we've seen before. The second method is Hoffman rearrangement. And this is a little weird, a uh, really fun mechanism. And let's just, I'll just quickly show this one again because you know it and it's, I, I, I kind of want to focus on lithium aluminum hydride, but how do we make this into an amide uh, for the Hoffman? Usually you um, would use SOCl2, make an acid chloride and then throw in ammonia. And that, that will quickly convert the carboxylic acid first into an acid chloride, acid chloride, and then ammonia will kick off the chlorine and you get acid chloride. Ah, uh, sorry, first you make an acid chloride, but then that reacts with the NH3 and you make a primary amide, right? And actually, what I'll, do, what I'll do is I'll show both of these methods in this little example. I'll show the direct reduction method and I'll show the Hoffman re rearrangement method. So the direct reduction is lithium aluminum hydride, right? Maybe H3O. Okay. And what does that do? Lithium aluminum hydride just wipes off the carbonyl and it just gives us. Amine, right? We learned that H minus attacks, and then rather than electrons kicking off nitrogen, nitrogen kicks off oxygen, right? That was a, a big topic when we we learned this maybe last chapter, yeah. And and then you get an aminium type thing gets reduced, you get the primary amine. Okay. Well, what is the the Hoffman? The Hoffman. And, oh yeah, one more thing. That method works for any amide. I can make any amide, not just this boring amide with NH2. I can make NH2, I can do N with a, some carbons, I can add you know, a couple different carbon things on nitrogen. In each of those cases, lithium aluminum hydride reduces it to the amine, okay? And in the case of the primary amide, it's Br2, NaOH and water. This only works on primary amides, which is the NH2 version. And this is that weird rearranged one, which loses the carbon. Remember that? I'm not going to review the mechanism because we just did it in detail, I think, last chapter. And that's the Hoffman rearrangement. And we lose a carbon, right? Here we have two carbons, here we have one carbon. Yeah. So CO2 is produced in this reaction. All right, and there we go. Let's show one more example real quickly on this page of another amide reduction with lithium aluminum hydride. How about May take this amine and react it with a funny acid chloride like this. What does that make? What does that make? Yeah, this nitrogen attacks, of course, then you lose the proton and then you make an amide.
And what happens if we treat this with lithium aluminum hydride? What happens if we take, we make an amide, amine plus acid chloride makes an amide. What if we treat that with lithium aluminum hydride? Well, that just wipes off the carbonyl. And you get the amine. Primary amine plus acid chloride makes this amide. And if we reduce this amide with lithium aluminum hydride, we make a secondary amine. So the net result was a primary amine going it to a secondary amine. And you can do the same thing with reductive amination too, which is the thing we just learned. So what we'll find is redu uh, amide reduction, which is make an amide, reduce it, is kind of like reductive amination. The only difference is with reductive amination, it's you do an amine plus like an aldehyde. You do the, you know, the corresponding aldehyde of this, so amine plus the aldehyde version would probably make an imine type derivative, and then it's like NAC and BH3. Yeah, so amide reduction and reductive amination are complementary. Okay. All right, so we're going to do one last thing for uh, today, and that's going to be just uh, to reinforce this amide reduction business, synthesis, um, uh, the antidepressant drug uh, Prozac. We're just going to show how to do that using the amide reduction method. So we just did it um, fluoxetine, right? We just showed it with reductive amination a second ago. Let's do the same thing with amide reduction just to show that they're all they're kind of similar ideas, similar methods. So let's draw it. Okay, I'm abbreviating it again. Uh, phenyl is a benzene. OAR means uh, the AR is an aromatic ring, so it's four trifluoromethyl benzene. Four trifluoromethyl benzene. Okay, and let's envision two different ways to make this. Well, because just like before, you know, with reductive amination, we looked at the product and we're like, well, we can envision an imine in one direction or the other direction. Well, we're not doing the imine method anymore. We're not doing reductive amination anymore. We're doing amide reduction, right? We have a reductive amination, which is one method, and Amide reduction, which is the other method. Reductive amination makes amines and reduces them. Amide reduction, we make amides and we reduce them. Okay, so I'm going to envision the amide in one of two places, either the left carbon or the right carbon. And so I'm going to call one of these A, the other B. I think I'm going to make the one on the right first. Okay, so I made that amide. If I if I was able to create this amide, and remember, amide amide synthesis is really easy too. Make acid chlorides, right? You just react amines with acid chlorides. Because if I made this amide, I should be able to convert this amide to this amine through a two-step process. What's the two-step process? Lithium aluminum hydride and water or acid. Lithium aluminum hydride. and water or acid. Okay. Let's show the alternate amide if the amide is on the other side. Got to draw my H somewhere. Let's put the H right there, I guess. Okay, and if we made this amide, if we took this amide, 
we could also reduce it to the amine, right? You can have the amide on one side, or you can have the amine on the other side. I'm going to abbreviate lithium aluminum hydride as LAH over here. It's the same thing. LAH, lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, so that's cool. That's really easy. We can take this amide, we can make this amide and reduce it. Or, and how do we make that amide then? Because we can make this amide and reduce it, or you can make this amide and reduce it. Both of them give the same final product. So how do you make an amide? Let's we'll draw, get the blue, the blue pen out and we'll draw a little squiggly line. Well we can do, we can make that amide from an acid chloride, right? Make it from that acid chloride and what's because there's two parts to an amide synthesis. You got the carbonyl part, which would be an acid chloride usually, and you got the other part, the amine part, right? So you have an amine part and an acid chloride part. Okay, well there's the acid chloride part. What's the how many carbons in the acid on the amine part? Well, it looks like it's got one carbon on a nitrogen, so it's methylamine. CH3 NH2. You could add a base like pyridine. With a simple amine like this, though, you can often use just excess of the amine, and the amine will do the work of the base, because it's a base too. It could be a nucleophile, kick off the chlorine, it could also be a base to suck, soak up the extra proton. Okay, how do you make this acid chloride from the carboxylic acid? How do you convert a carboxylic acid to an acid chloride? You should know that. SOCl2. Okay. Alright, so lastly, let's just show how might we make this amide. Well, the thing about this, this one's just a little funny. Um, we're going to still, I still have two pieces, right? We're going to have the left piece. That's an easy piece. That's just an amine, right? And we'll have the, sorry, this right piece. Right piece, and then we'll have like the left piece. The only funny thing is that this this uh, one carbon piece is not a good acid chloride. It's not stable. So we actually have to use kind of an anhydride type um, derivative. So yeah, this this uh, as an acid chloride is not good. So we'll, we'll just use an anhydride instead. But this is very easy. So it's just the amine, right? So it's react that amine with a one carbon electrophile and what we usually, well, we can use this anhydride, it's called formal anhydride because the acid chloride is not stable, not stable. That acid chloride is not stable, but this anhydride is, uh, can be prepared and maybe a little bit of base, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, the nitrogen attacks, then the base takes off the proton, right side's a leaving group, and that makes this formal amide, form, form amide. Form amide, form amide, form amide, for, like formic, like formic acid, it's a form amide, okay? All right. One more thing. We'll just while we we're, while we're going here, one other way to attack, to make a formamide that's maybe even better than formic anhydride is we we think we mentioned this before. This thing is called a mixed anhydride. It's like a formic on one side, acetyl on the other. In the real world, this is what people usually use. Real world. 
Um, and why, you know, if the nucleophile attacks this, which side is it going to go after? The one with one carbon or the one with two carbons? Well, it's going to attack the least sterically hindered side, the left side. And so this is this is a little more stable even than this, than formic anhydride. So the real world, this is what people use. Okay, I think we even mentioned this anhydride before. Okay, last thing, last thing. Well, just while we're thinking about amines, let's think. One, let's go one more step backwards. How can we make this primary amine using the stuff we learned in the beginning of the class? Maybe, maybe we could do. Maybe from a alkyl halide. How do we do that? We learned this. We remember we had some bad method, a bad method, and some good methods. Think of a good method to do this. I'll tell you my my suggestion. Just make an azide, reduce it. Remember, we can we can make primary amines from alkyl halides by like NaN3 and then lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, so we just did a, a pretty, you know, substantial retrosynthesis, kind of going backwards of Prozac. Okay, I'll draw this out. We're done. I'll just zoom out and let you can see the whole thing, if you can see it all. I think you can see it, all the detail. I'll, I'll, I'm done talking, but I'll just kind of push this so you can see it all, you know. So, yeah, we had... we had the two methods. The two, the two methods were the carbonyl is on one side or the other, and then we broke the carbonyl apart. Either acid chloride and methylamine reduction, or the carboxylic acid can be created from, acid chloride can be created from a carboxylic acid, but we also have the other alternate way where the amide's on the other side. And amide can be created from an amine and formic anhydride. And then we just pushed it even further backward and just said, oh, how can you make that primary amine? Oh, from an alkyl halide. And then do that from NaN3 lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, sorry, I went a little over. I'll stop.